everybody. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Eric and I'm glad you can make it. I really am. I'm really glad you can make it because today you get to see me step outside of my comfort zone. And that's the beauty of Celebrate Sausage. We're going to push the limits of what we're comfortable with and experience sausages from all over the world. Today we're going to be making a German sausage known as Tivast. Tivast literally translates to a tea sausage or a sausage served at tea time. And this particular sausage, although not difficult to make, is pretty wild. It is a sausage that only undergoes fermentation and then cold smoking. Matter of fact, Tivast is considered a raw sausage. As you watch me make and eventually eat this raw sausage, I want you to remember a couple of things. If you do plan on making this recipe, get your hands on the freshest meat possible. Don't go to your local big box store and get their discount pork belly. Go to your butcher, know when it was butchered, and get the absolute freshest meat you can get your hands on. And as you're buying your meat, just make sure that it is trichinella free. You don't want that parasite inside your meat. After all, this is a raw sausage. The other thing that I want you to remember is that if you do plan on making this recipe, I have taken every step possible to ensure that you will produce a safe product. So you will find a link to the recipe in the description box below. And if you follow my recipe with good quality fresh meat, you will produce a safe product. With that being said, let's make tea vest. The selection of meat for this sausage is relatively important because it's a spreadable sausage. And so it's gonna have a slightly higher fat content than uh, your typical sausages. Now, the first cut I'm gonna be using is a portion of the pork belly that has a lot of soft fat around it. And so that's gonna be this piece right here. And notice the fat is pretty soft. And the other piece of the pork belly that we're gonna be using comes from a segment of the belly where the fat is more firm. All right, so let me just cut this right fast and you can visibly see that the fat is more solid and we're gonna be using that right here. In addition to the pork belly, we're also gonna be adding pork shoulder a little lean beef, and then we're gonna add some extra pork fat. So if you look at the recipe in the description box below, you're gonna notice that the fat content is something like 45 or 50%. And that's primarily the reason why this sausage is so spreadable. Now I'm using back fat in the recipe, but you can easily use leaf fat, which is the fat used to make lard. And that also makes a really nice spreadable tea vest. So whatever fat you choose to use, not a big deal. We're making a kilo today. This is gonna go into the freezer and then we're going to grind it. That's gonna go back into the freezer and let me show you the rest of our ingredients. This is a fermented sausage, so we're gonna be adding a bacterial starter culture known as Flavor of Italy. This particular starter culture is just a collection of different bacteria that are going to lower the pH in our sausage as it ferments. This is gonna create an environment that's inhospitable to unwanted bacteria, things like that. And so we're just gonna rehydrate that for 30 minutes, set it to the side. As far as the spices go, we're gonna add salt. We're gonna add some cure number one, which is gonna cure our sausage and keep it safe. We're next gonna add some white pepper and some allspice. Finally, we're gonna come back with a little sugar uh, table sugar is fine in this recipe. And then we're gonna add some dextrose. Dextrose is going to feed the bacteria in the starter culture. So we're just gonna add a little touch of that. Not a whole lot is needed for this sausage. And like I said, the description box has all the spices and all the details on how to proceed. Once our spice mix and our culture is ready, we're gonna get our casing ready. We're just gonna be using 40 to 43 millimeter beef rounds from the sausage maker. And it's now time to make this sausage. So our meat has been ground twice, it's partially frozen, and it's going into our food processor. At this step, uh, only the meat is being chopped. 
and the way that you add the spices and the water is incredibly important because we're not looking to create the type of bind that you would typically have with a normal emulsified sausage. And so we're not adding uh, the salts just yet and notice that there's no binder in this recipe and that's because we don't want our meat to bind together. We want it very spreadable. So notice the temperature after about 30 seconds of mixing is uh, 43 degrees, 44 degrees. And so now that it's been chopped up, we're gonna go ahead and add the ice that the recipe calls for. We wanna keep the temperature of the meat below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've added our ice, that's gonna cool it down. We're just gonna keep chopping for another 20 seconds or so. That's gonna break the meat and the fat particles down to create one really nice, smooth farce. So after another 20 seconds of chopping, all right, we're at 42 degrees, 41 degrees. Now it's time to add our starter culture and a little dark rum. So I've just mixed those two together. And adding this extra liquid is gonna help loosen up the meat batter and it's now gonna start to turn into more like a meat paste, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we're just gonna chop this for another 15 seconds, you know, not very long. Take the temperature one more time and we should still be pretty good. 45 and a half Fahrenheit, absolutely perfect. This is the very last step. We're now gonna finally add our spices. And adding your spices, you know, your salt and all the other ingredients at the very end is absolutely critical for the sausage because if you add it too soon, you're gonna extract a protein called myosin, which is gonna actually aid in the binding process. And we don't want that. So we're just gonna chop this for another five seconds or so just to incorporate those spices. And now our farce is complete. This is what it should look like. And now it's time to stuff it into its casing. So we're using 40, 43 millimeter uh, beef middles. Whatever casing you have on hand, you know, I would go with at least 40 millimeter, but you could go bigger if you'd like. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be pulling it out of the casing and then spreading it on some bread or toast, which is typically how it's served. So we're just going to go ahead and tie that casing off using a bubble knot and then get that mince inside the casing as we get this ready for the fermentation stage. During the fermentation stage, the bacteria that we added will begin to consume the sugar that we added and they will release lactic acid. And that's what's gonna lower the pH of our meat, making it a safe product. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the mince that was left in our hopper and just wrap it in some cellophane. Now this is what we're gonna use to test the pH of our meat uh, when it comes time for that. So at this point, I'm just gonna tie off the sausage and it'll be ready to ferment. And I think you're gonna love how I ferment this sausage because it is incredibly easy. So here's what we're gonna do to ferment this sausage. We're gonna cover it with some cling film and then we're gonna leave it on our kitchen counter overnight. And that is it. We're able to do this because my kitchen's pretty warm. It's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And so the total fermentation time is 18 to 24 hours. 75 to 85 Fahrenheit or 24 to 29 Celsius is the ideal temperature it should be in with a 90% humidity. The cling film that we added is gonna keep the humidity level high. And if you have a relatively cool kitchen, you can always place this inside of an oven with the light on to satisfy the temperature requirement. During the last eight to 12 hours of the fermentation stage, we're gonna place this into our cold smoker. And by the time we're done, our target pH should be somewhere between 4.9 and 5.1. So it's now the next day, it's been sitting on my counter for roughly 12 hours, and now we're just gonna go ahead and pop this into our smoker and apply cold smoke. Now that's smoke that's under 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important that it's under 90 degrees Fahrenheit because we don't wanna cook this sausage. We just want to give it a really nice smoky element. And we're gonna leave it in there for another eight hours. So we're gonna cold smoke this for eight hours. This is what it's gonna look like by the time we are finished. The entire time it's been smoking, it's also continuing to ferment. And so we're now gonna test the pH of this sausage to determine whether or not it's ready. Remember that our target pH is gonna be anywhere between 4.9 and 5.1. And the easiest way to test your pH when you're making fermented meat products is to use a pH meter. We're using a pH meter by a pair of instruments. We're just gonna stick it right on in there. And remember 4.9 to 5.1, we're right in the middle. This is absolutely perfect. So our tea vest is officially ready and it's now time to eat it.
All right, so the German Teewurst, not a particular sausage that I'm familiar with coming from North America. This isn't something that you generally see at your local supermarkets or butchers, but one that I found incredibly fascinating. Let me explain to you what I'm looking at right now. The, the color is very, very pink. It's very soft, and even at room temperature, it's softening up quite a bit more as that fat is just slowly loosening everything up. The smell of it smells smoky, which is to be expected. You get the combination of different spices that are inside. It smells quite pleasant, and I can genuinely say that I have never eaten raw pork in my life. Bottoms up. Hmm. It's like an awesome meat spread is what it is. I mean, if you think about it, it's very similar to the texture of sobrasada that you would have in Spain or even the Italian andouille. Although those tend to be a little bit drier, this one's very, very moist. And um, let me see. Oh. <laughs> That's delicious. Great mouthfeel, beautifully smoked, delicately seasoned. You really get the flavor of the pork. There's nothing about it that is indicative of eating raw pork. I mean, after all, it is cured and fermented and, and then cold smoked, and that's really the entire process. It's never seen heat, it's never been dried, and so you're getting the elements of the fermentation, you're getting the elements of the cure, so you get a little of that hammy flavor. And um, overall, I'm pleasantly surprised. <sighs> I gotta have another bite. This is crazy. Mm. Not a sausage I normally would go for, especially if somebody were to explain it to me, but that's the beauty of Celebrate Sausage. We get to push ourselves past our comfort zone try sausages from around the world and experience charcuterie from different cultures. And I'm glad I did because Teewurst is a winner and I hope you get a chance to make it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, found it helpful or entertaining in any way, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And if you're new to this channel, we want to say welcome. Thanks for being here. We are in the middle of Celebrate Sausage season two. We're uploading a new sausage video every single day through the month of October. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.